Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of the Dan Dawson Show. So probably tomorrow, tomorrow evening, because uh, I have some business stuff to do today. I'm going to adjust this background. I think it needs to come down a little lower. What do you guys think? Um, but I want to talk to you about Tim Pool getting swatted uh, and Marjorie Taylor Greene receiving death threats. But this should be no surprise to any of us. This is what the left does. We've seen it for two or three years. They run by intimidation, you know, just like the Nazi party. This is what they do. So why is anybody surprised? Tim Pool and his cast act like they're surprised. Brandon Tatum, if you'll notice, from the Brandon Tatum show, was not surprised at all. He's like, you got swatted. This is what happens, because see, this is how they operate when you start interfering in the things they want to do. And Tim Pool has become a large disruptor of that. But I want to play for you in his own words what happened. Here you go. that aren't familiar, last night during the show, we got swatted, and that means someone called the police and claimed there was an active shooter on the property and that people had been hurt. During the show, Luke was talking, and you can see an officer walk past the camera and then walk out, and it seems to go very quickly. I walk out of the room, and then uh, after we realize what happened, you know, Liddy's like, look, we got swatted. I get up and I go talk to the cop. There were two out there, and we come back. A lot of people didn't get the full picture from that. They believed there was just a couple of cops who walked in, waved, and left. There were eight cops that I ended up, uh, I saw, I think I saw five downstairs when I went back out and said what was going on and asked them politely to leave. And then there were also state troopers and there was another jurisdiction, I think a sheriff's department. They were all asked politely to leave. I said, I, I don't want you here without a warrant. So uh, as to what happened, we don't know who did it. We do have a couple different firms, legal firms, filing everything. And we're, we're getting into high gear to figure out what we can preserve, body camera footage, the 911 call. People have already released the, 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 the police radio calls, a couple of them. And what I can say is I, uh, there were a few theories as to what happened and why we got swatted. Now, I'm sure whoever did it is probably listening. I don't know what their intention was. Some people were saying it's just it's the Internet. It's trolls. It's what happens, perhaps. Some people were thinking that it's related to some trolling that's been going on. But uh, one of the theories that we, we had to discuss was whether or not it was related to Marjorie Taylor Greene's appearance on the show. I did mention it the other day. And after the show, I didn't want to, you know, uh, contact her team and, and drag her into something. She was here the day before on the 5th, not, on, not the day we got, we got swatted. But, uh, you know, Luke mentioned it's probably a good idea for security reasons just to let people know, like, hey, this happened. And uh, I can't speak for Marjorie Taylor Greene and what her opinion of this is. But what was conveyed to me is that she's been receiving a large amount of death threats as of the 6th. And that leads me to believe that what happened to us was directly related to us posting her. I don't know for sure. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I'm not saying I believe 100%. I'm saying it seems probable. And the reason is we filmed these live episodes. We start at 8 p.m. We end at 10. At 10, when we end the live stream is when YouTube says it's published and it sends out notifications slowly to a bunch of people. That means for a lot of people, you'll wake up in the morning and get a notification, you know, Tim Cast IRL with guest Marjorie Taylor Greene. On this day, the morning of January 6th, when people are getting this notification that we hosted her, that's the day she was getting slammed with death threats. So I don't think it's a coincidence then that on that same day that she's getting death threats, we also get swatted. And it may be because some people, either the individual mistakenly thought we were currently hosting her on the show, or it was just they saw the show, the notification, or just someone mentioned it and they said, screw these people, and they end up swatting us. Ultimately, we have no idea why it happened, but I think that seems to be the most likely. I don't know. Uh, I don't know for sure. And I don't want to, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to make it seem like we're saying it's, def uh, it's definitive. We, we just don't know, but that seems likely. And uh, I don't know if you guys wanted to add anything. And well, you know, of course, this is a very serious matter. We were very lucky that one of our employees was outside and prevented the swatting, prevented prevented the raid. Um, I, I don't know if the officer was waiting for backup or just waiting to assess he was the situation. Waiting for backup. But if you okay, but but you know, if the officer was waiting to assess the situation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to get too far away from my point here. My point being, what did you expect? When you're going to war with leftists, this is what happens. This is what they do. They come off all aggressive, blah, blah, blah. And they'll send you threats and they'll threaten to show up. They'll show up at your house. But the minute you defend yourself, your family, your loved ones, 
Then they cry baby. Oh my God, this is what happened. AOC does it all the time. Rashida Tlaib does it. This is what the leftists do. You saw it with BLM. You saw it with BLM. They've killed 30 something people. Let three of them get shot by a 17 year old defending himself. It's like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. They burnt down cities. They attacked federal buildings. They attacked federal courthouses. They attacked the White House. They burned down the church outside of the White House or tried to at least. And then you hit back. Oh my God, it's horrible. It's the worst thing ever. This is what they do. Why is anybody surprised? I guarantee you Marjorie Taylor Greene receiving death threats is not a surprise to her or anybody else. This is what they do. They want to be all aggressive. Then when you smack them in the mouth like you should, they whine and cry like bitches and babies and CNN and MSNBC cover up for them. This is what they do. This is what they do. It happens all the time. You guys go back to the Dan Dawson Show Facebook page and watch the receipts I give and watch how I come off. And as soon as I started hitting back on people who were hitting on me, calling me motherfucker, and you're being disrespect and they were being disrespectful and fuck you and this and that. As soon as I started hitting back, I get a call from a mutual friend. And she's like, you can't talk like that to my aunt. Like your aunt started it. Don't start something you can't finish. That's what my daddy always told me. That's what my grandpa told me. Don't start something you can't finish. But that's what they do. See, and then they go and whine in their corner. So I have no doubts Marjorie Taylor Greene has been receiving death threats because this is what they do. And they face no repercussions for it because they have the mainstream media, the, the Joy Behars, the Whoopi Goldbergs, the Don Lemons, formerly Andrew, Col or, uh, Andrew Cuomo, right? <clears throat> the um, Joanne Reeds defending them. And nobody's willing to do anything. Well, people get to a certain point, you're going to do something. This is ridiculous. So do something. Hey, you know what? You show up at my house. I've already said, I live in Texas. God bless Texas. See it right there. Oops, there you go. God bless Texas. Show up on my front lawn if you want to. <laughs> when that AR-15 finishes speaking with that 50 round drum, you're going to wish you hadn't. I'm not taking any, I'm not taking any shorts from anybody, but they do stuff like this swatting. Three, what, three, four years now, they've been burning down American cities. Nothing's done to them. You have Kamala Harris, the vice president, going out and bailing them out of jail so they can go and do the same thing. You have the uh, uh, mayor of Seattle, Jenny Durkin, talking about, oh, it could be a summer of love till they come to her house. This is what, you have them trying to march, and I'll give you the, the, the perfect example. Former Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best, when they attempted to march on her house, and I have video of it, it's on my show, go back and look at it if you want to see it. When they showed up at her house, and the neighbors came out with their F-150s, which is funny enough, because everybody in Texas has an F-150, feeling like I need to get one. I have two giant SUVs, but I feel like I need to get an F-150. They used their F-150s to block the road so they couldn't get down. They came out with their rifles to defend her. But see, this is what they do. They're bullies. And once you punch a bully in the mouth, they go whining to mama. And now it's, it's honestly at the point to where maybe we have to punch these bullies in the mouth. Maybe that's what has to happen. These bullies need to be punched in the mouth. Maybe they're not getting punched in the mouth enough. But it's hard because you have, you have the mainstream media. You have the Democratic Party looking out for them. And they're going to protect them. Yeah, Kamala Harris is going to bail people out of jail. Hell, look, um, Cori Bush and, and AOC want to shut down Rikers Island and let all the violent offenders out. That's cool as long as they stay in New York. You come to Texas, you can end up in a pine box. I'm telling you now. Um, you want to know what Texas is like? You might want to, as my sister um, Vanessa says, you might want to watch 1883. It's not going to be a fun time, motherfucker. But, and also don't put chili or don't put beans in chili. But, this is what they do. I don't understand why anybody on the Dim Pool Show is, 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 is surprised. Why are you surprised? This is what they do. I wouldn't be surprised if I got swatted right now. Because what they do, like I said, you can go on the Dan Dawson Show Facebook page and you can see what happened. It's like, I'm trying to be respectful. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to present facts. 
And then you get to calling me motherfuckers and fuck you and fuck that. Well, you know what? I'm going to give as good as I get. That's what how I was brought up. You throw a haymaker. Hey, I'm going to throw two haymakers. It is what it is. It's, it's, this is like in casino. I've said this in a video before. Hey, you beat me with your fist. I'm coming back with a bat. You beat me with a bat. I'm coming back with a knife. You beat me with a knife. I'm coming back with a gun. It is what it is. I'm not going to stop. And I, I hope Tim Poole doesn't get discouraged by this and just continues to do what he does because he has a really, oh my God, an amazing show. I urge you all to watch it. Uh, also, Brandon Tatum was on that show. And we don't always agree on everything. My nephew is a police officer, but <laughs> even for my standard, I think Brandon Tatum kind of goes overboard for cops sometimes. But he has some really good points. He's a very smart man. Hey, go watch him. Check it out. But um, with all that, all I can say is <sighs> this is what they do. Like, subscribe, share. And as always, especially in these days and times, keep your powder dry and do what you got to do.